Okay. I mean, the thing with a Luna is the Bouncing Glaives are so good if a Titan comes in and just cleans up all of the creeps. It's kind of what Luna does best, does best, actually. Because all of those Glaives are going to bounce so often, it's kind of going to be the same effect as a Luna whacking the bases, where all of a sudden all the health pools are just going to melt. It becomes more of a... I don't know, the damage looks more like Iron Shell because there's so many get so many glaives bouncing and Titan is a great setup for that. Especially this kind of makes Aghanim so much more viable too. I mean the ability to slow up two people who are close together to give Luna the chance to just spam away with her glaives. It's ridiculous. Either way, we're gonna we're gonna load in here so quick. Quick at force and then we got ourselves a proper game on our hands, so just give me a sec. Prepare for battle. Okay, and it does look like we're ready. I also kind of like the same call to the good luck of fun. I mean, it might seem a bit impolite. Honestly, it is a bit impolite if you ask me. But on the other hand, Team Evil Corp, they do respect their opponents here. And by being a bit, I guess, unsociable, they do show that they definitely do take their opponents seriously, that they're not too hyped about, about well, having a semi-new-ish team as this is a new lineup, who I'm not sure how much they've scrimmed so far, but it can't be that long compared to Evil Corp, who already have a ton of pro scene experience because some of these players have been on teams before some of these players have been some somewhat active dota personalities i guess is the right word because if you look at glhf lanaya um wait i think medusa right yep or gg vp lanaya either way lanaya a somewhat famous player who does have a lot of experience i think a streamer too but might be mistaken about that one Meanwhile, up on the top lane, we got a bit of skirmish. Chowdy going to get ran at, going to get rolled at two. And Flensmeister, although he did take the Rock Barrage early on as well, his playstyle would justify. It's not going to be enough, especially against a big meat cake like Tide Hunter. Big slab of beef who's just going to run at you and just going to kind of ruin your day. How does failure taste? So, on the mid lane, GGVP Lanaya up against... Okay! Vivi Zayak showing why he deserves to be in the Pro Dota Cup. Immediately going for a Curious Snipe. And that's the way uh, that's the way to start off a game properly. I mean, Curious Snipe, it's going to annoy the crap out of OD. Nice. Well, he is supposed to be the annoying one in that lane. And... Luna also seems off to a pretty good lane. I mean, Void, he can be kind of annoying. Yes, he can kind of start running down Luna at some point in the game. But if you're able to just consistently harass him to a somewhat low health total, then running at the Luna is suddenly going to become really scary. Especially with the Aura and the Lunar Beam. Lu Lucent Beam, there we go. And I mean, Lucent Beam, at some point, it's going to be 300, it's going to be 300 damage. 0 0.8 seconds might not be a very long stun, especially for a Void. But it does mean he can mitigate slightly less damage. And for a Void, whose main staple in the offlane is to ignore a lot of damage. This greedy pick might just get punished here by the Luna. What I don't get is why the Lucent Beam is being maxed here. And I know that sounds weird, because you kind of do want the level 6... Or at least level, or at least level seven Luna ult no ultimate a lot of the times, especially in a game like this. However, the thing is, you're up against the void, and as a Luna, as a hero who likes to farm a lot, you kind of want to focus on winning your lane. And against Void, it doesn't really matter if you deal him a hundred or three hundred damage with your stun, because he's going to time walk it off anyways. It's kind of how the hero operates. On the other hand, the beam can be great for chasing, but. I am kind of questioning it here.
Meanwhile, area 134 on the tiny support. He is one of the better players, so definitely should be able to pull it off. Let's just go ahead and look around a bit. I don't like pauses because I don't have a co-caster, so I easily run out of stuff to talk about. But actually, let's just look at FEGs here. Um, Voplo Gen... Gen... Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I can't read Russian really well. Weird as Beastmaster. If somebody has translation for me, I would be grateful. But I'm pretty sure all Russians are over at the Russian stream watching. Please don't rape me. <laughs> I don't really think a lot of people find trees sexually appealing, but you know, damn hippies. Don't push, please. Okay. And lastly, Centaur in a weirdest pose without any inscription. Over on the dire side, we do have a couple of FEGs too, but it looks like we are pausing. And don't worry, we're gonna get more chances to... Oh well, never mind that then. Oh yeah, so Luna's still AFK. I guess that's fine-ish to unpause here by accident. It's not really that much unpolite or something. Vot on Yatakoi kill. Then we got Area 134, who of course has to be a bit of a memer. Antiperspirant deodorant for me. I wonder which brand he's trying to advertise here. I'm pretty sure it's Old, Spi Old Spice, but I'm not quite 100% sure which brand it might be he's referring to. Gotta be Old Spice. Luna proceeding to free farm some more. Now Shadow Demon comes in to bully the late, to bully the void into submission. And BV Zayak is going to go down here. He deserved to die, honestly, after that career snipe. I mean, that guy already did a ton of work, so this is a much needed and definitely good return kill. Dooza, meanwhile, manages to have a good lane against OD, which it's not only r really uncommon, it's also something OD struggles to recover from. OD not the best hero when it comes to recovery farm. He takes a very long while to come back online after he falls behind on the carry he's supposed to counter in this case, or in general, on the heroes that can kill him most of the time. Which in this case is Medusa, so... So... Well... I don't know, it seems like a really good start for Comanche. And I mean... They do have some good here. They do have some good players, so it definitely is justified. Although still, te although still, general team experience and the amount of scrims, I'm pretty sure do favor E Corp here. But well, let's see how it goes. E Corp's draft, after all, very greedy. Bounty. Tiny, getting ran down, but area he is doing a good job kiting this, and meanwhile owned me, dishing out a lot of damage to Monza there, can he go for a kill, looks like he can't with Luna, oh actually owned me might go down as well, evil corp, are they going to get punished here, witch doctor comes in to help out a bit, will get himself one kill on the shadow demon, but Monza going to farm up some more, and it looks like Comanche are punishing this hyper greedy draft from evil corp, with a just as greedy draft. I mean, that's not only uncommon, it's also extremely painful because with a draft like this, once Comanche do pull ahead too far, of course that isn't the case quite yet, it's going to take a while longer, but if Team Comanche do pull ahead too far, then their insane late game potential is going to really kind of ruin their day. It's going to 
really kind of make it hard for E Corp here to, despite having a Void and an OD and a Tiny and a Gyrocopter and a Witch Doctor who also scales somewhat well with the Maledict, it's going to be a hard one. Just because with five cores or five, well, high impact heroes, I guess you could say, it's going to be really hard to balance the net worth. It's going to be really hard to keep the net worth in balance so that you can actually take those fights. Since otherwise, Luna and Medusa, they're not discrim they're not discriminative. They hit everyone at once, which makes them so insanely strong. Tidehunter taking a lot of damage there. But managed to get to base, so he's going to be fine. Owned me meanwhile. Not quite so lucky and Shadow Demon, why can't he just use his Illu to hit the tower? I don't know. Those Soul Catcher Illus, especially with level 2, they're pretty strong. At some point, they can just be like Chaos Knight Illus or something. So I definitely appreciate those few players who do utilize them to their fullest potential, even if it's just a tiny bit of tower damage, even if it's just like two hits on the tower. Why the hell not go for it? Okay, this time not owned me, barely able to get away. That looked awfully sad there. However, he's not quite going to go down. Bottom tower now getting pushed in a bit. Only level 1 Lunar Blessing. So... Once I focused more on the typical Lunar build than to deviate it. Which I guess indicates that Team Comanche aren't as scared of this greedy draft. And if they do beat Evil Corp here, which of course nothing is decided yet. I'd just like to point it out, because if Comanche do beat Evil Corp here, they would automatically kind of position themselves in this cup as one of the alphas, one of the big bad teams you do not want to mess with. Evil Corp, they're huge. They're respectable. Also, the old Comanche, I think Ryujin was on the old Comanche, if not just standing in. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Evil Corp, they're doing their best to deal with being behind a little bit. And I mean, if they can keep the net worth going like this, just bumping up and down slowly and always bumping back down, then it's going to fight it's going to favor Evil Corp by a tiny margin here. Or I, I guess it would. I mean, although Luna and Medusa are both really scary, I think an OD Void combo can out carry here. Dale goes down, OP goes down, a lot of casualties, and finally the Void Illu is doing some work. And it still hits pretty hard, I mean, it hits for slightly more than a melee creep here. Top tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. But tier 1 taking a lot of damage with the Shadow Demon Luna combo. And Comanche, they do have a lot of scary push, they do have a lot of scary team fight. But when it comes to an all-out resource battle, Evil Corp should Dyer's still be favored as long as they can keep the net worth intact. So Evil Corp, they do have something to focus on, they do have a goal to play it to play according to and they do have a win condition to kind of go for. Luna going to get caught in the Chronosphere. Shadow, Shadow Demon al already going for the save. Plansmeister goes down. Owned me. Able to retreat for now. Luna getting tossed back. And everyone 3-4 set up for a good and high value return kill. Getting that Luna there is great. Now you only need to take care of Medusa once. I'm going to switch over to Network a little bit early here because of how hard both of these heroes have been farming. So Luna dying there is really good, especially if we look at the Network comparison between those cores. Now Medusa is the only issue since if Lanaya does out farm to a certain extent, then OD isn't going to be that scary. Okay, so 
Earth Spirit, Zayek going to go down to Flensmeister. A nice return kill. Flensmeister, he definitely likes to fight around this time. So, a bit of a slow start for Comanche is going to really annoy Evil Corp here. Dale on the Tidehunter, meanwhile, opting for Hood of Defiance to be turned into a pipe a bit later. He can also just opt for the mechanism soon. Since against the Void, it is very nice to have some reliable heal. It is very nice to have a bit of sustain in those team fights in general. Especially with a call down, all of that available. And I mean... I get that Lanaya doesn't really quite depend on it as much. After all, you're a Medusa, you get just the same benefit from having mana refill. From having mana boots on your side. But for a Luna, it's really huge. And for a Shadow Demon as well, because Shadow Demon is a bit of a squishy backliner. But if we look at the current state of this game, both Flensmeister as well as Monza lead here, farming up. And I mean Lanaya too. But for Medusa, it's more mandatory. It's more obliged to actually go into the jungle and get yourself a top of net worth. Whereas the Luna, you can stick in lane. Unless you get killed, of course, but with the Eclipse there, at least dealing some poke back damage, but in comes the OD, Ryujin, going to deliver the damage together with the Witch Doctor. A bit of an overkill, a very big rotation, however, Monza lead is being kept small. It's only the Medusa that still is a big issue. Medusa still zero death, opting for the Blade Mail build to enable the early fighting as well, and Flansmeister with the Ravage, no chance for him to live. Now a Flansmeister Illu coming through. Looking to fight, tanking a couple of the cask bounces there. Down goes Chowley. And Chowley, he's pretty chill. I'm always having a great one, you know, just, enjo just enjoying his game and he's quite fun in lobbies too. A fellow German as well, so I might have a bit of a bias. After all with Dota or sports in general, a bit of a nationality bias does appear. It's kind of inevitable. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. But either way, Team Comanche pulling ahead. Down goes Zayak. But that's not what that's not what Evil Corp should be worried about. This Medusa is, and Naya does have a Shadow Demon into. Help out with a little bit of support, does get medicated up, but with the Mask of Madness, with the Mask of Madness, is going to be able to get away. Now just run into the jungle and farm up. Luna, meanwhile, taking the really big stack there. I think it would be more beneficial on the Medusa, however, you do kind of want to keep both of those cores at the same level of farm, just in case that one of them really gets shut down a bit later when the death timers are going to be 70 seconds or something like that. And honestly, in a game like this, that's not going to take that long, because Team Comanche are in charge of most of the economics going of the economics going on. Ryujin is farming to some extent. Flensmeister is farming pretty well, but they're gonna need to keep this up for a while. And even then, a couple of good Chrome Spheres are essential here for Team E Corp to come back in this first game of the series. Of course, there's always second game of the series, so. Even if this draft turns out to be too greedy, then at least then at least E Corp do know that it's their greed that punished them. And I mean, I was meant to have this. if drafts like this work, they do feel so satisfying. So I can't really blame E Corp for picking this draft. If anything, it's an accomplishment from Team Comanche to get away with this greedy of a draft if they do manage to actually pull this game in their favor and keep winning. Which I guess isn't that hard with a Luna free farming Dyer's and a Medusa with attack. zero deaths. Dyer's structures are fortified. Going to get a Scotty now, going to tank up a bit. Which of course against OD is essential. And another thing I find quite notable is there is not a lot of fighting going on at all Dyer's here. Transmise is going to farm himself a stack Radiant's to keep himself somewhat comparable to Luna and Network. However, Zayek going to enable a kill, and this is just a support and an off laner. Running down the safe laner. Because 
Team E Corp, they can't really afford to have support stick around at all times. They can't really afford to use the body system, which Team Comanche has been relying on to kind of keep themselves in the steady Radiant's position. Now, not only half stack will be taken here, and of course, Blends must losing some net worth. But in addition to that, Comanche gets some more space to move around the map. Team E Corp with a smoke towards the bottom lane. They just waste a lot of time. Down goes the bottom tier 1 tower. So. That is a good return tower. That is a good return tower. However, if we look at the push on the side of Comanche, not just because of the Shadow Demon Luna combo, but also because of the Dusa in terms of wave clear. And in general, because of the insane damage that this lineup is going to do once it reaches high ground. I mean, Medusa's already insanely good at taking racks. Okay. Wait, we got a smoke gank. No time for me to finish my rant here, I guess. Or actually, oh wait, I do. As Team Comanche are going to be able to get away, it seems. Okay, Linaya is going to get caught with a toss interrupting the TP there. Now going to proxy Medusa ultimate, and all of a sudden a team-wide decision has been made to instead try and take this fight, or at least fight back a little bit to get Medusa out of here. And OD ends up dying first, Ryujin. Rest in peace, man. Own me going to go down next. Team Comanche, they know their priorities here. I'm actually amazed at how good of a, de of a debut they're making. It might just be E Corp getting punished for drafting greedy, but this is huge. This is actually some really good Dota. Gyro getting a decent call down, da call down done. But isn't really able to capitalize. Okay. Zayek dropped. Earth Spirit really not having the game of his life here. However, this is the tier 3 tower that's being pushed. It's not a tier 2. It's not a tier 1. This is the base. If this tower falls, then it's probably going to be GG. And now it looks like Tidehunter is going to go down next. He's trying to go for a TP out and not going to be able to get away with it. Too low in. Sorry, man, but you're too stupid to live. Pretty much OD in a nutshell. So in the end it's going to be three return kills to punish that bit of greed being shown there by Team Comanche. Three for nothing. More than 2k gold swinging around. And I mean, that does set up Evil Corp for a slight bit of a comeback. Evil Corp, they need some time to farm up on Ryujin, but Ryujin... With the insteal, he doesn't really need that many items, as long as he's able to get a couple of hits, in which of course the chronosphere enables, which of course the cooldown helps to enable too. He can just steal in to make up for his complete lack of damage items and generally utility items too. Since after a while you're just going to right click to the point where nobody dares to come near you. Meanwhile, Flensmeister, he's farming stacks, he's getting a BKB here as well. Two early BKBs, not really what you want to see in a game of greed. Not really what you want to be doing as well, though. I mean, it's kind of weird to see BKBs being purchased early in games like this in general, because in the super long run, it is going to benefit Comanche. But Comanche, they are momentum dependent here. If they do fall too far behind, then they're going to get destroyed. Of course, Comanche, with an 8k lead, falling behind is their least worry. But if they do end up losing both cores in a teamfight or something similar, or even if Team E Corp don't kill anyone and are just able to run down tower after tower, things are going to turn south. And now we're going to see not really an early road necessarily, but for this game it is an early road. I mean, neither of these heroes are good at taking roads. The Luna Aura does help, but it's not even maxed yet. And it does look, it does look like Roshan is going down at the cost of half a tier 2 tower. A tier 2 tower which E Corp would really like to get. Evil Corp, they generally need to take some towers here. In comes Earth Spirit and all of a sudden, what looked like just defending the tower is going to result in a death on owned me. Now an Illu army is at the disposal of Sid to push out the bottom lane and Sid. Although not a super well known player I guess. He does have 
Well, not a super well-known player. Does sound like a bit of an understatement still. He does have a decent-ish deal of fence, but he's not really a star player, I guess you could say. And considering that, he does seem a bit underhyped, a bit underrated. Which, to be fair, can be said about the entirety of Team Comanche. Team Comanche, they used to be one of the top tier 2 teams in the entirety of Dota. Nowadays, not quite so much. Luna, being held back a bit at least. But now there's going to be Illus to help out. And the Glaze are just going to bounce to and fro. Dudes are also really good at shoving, at shoving Rex because anyone who comes nearby is going to get fired as well. And would you look at that? The Glaze just bouncing away, just dealing a bit of chip there to all of the towers. And because so many of them, and it's going to get more soon, Nail, meanwhile, is going to get dropped. Doesn't have the Aegis, so rip. But I'm guessing he's fine with that. I mean... If your Medusa is still 2.5k ahead of the Gyrocopter, although Flensmeister is catching up a bit, you're not too worried. And Flens and Ryujin, they're both doing their best to catch up. Ryujin does a BKB, 10 seconds. It's really going to matter, so he better use this wisely. For it might make the difference between winning and losing this game at this point. Just because of how hard Luna can push, and how hard Luna can push an advantage. I mean, Comanche, they're now at 10k gold lead, and with a Rex down, that's go only going to amplify. So, E Corp, they gotta play this really disciplined, really careful, and yet, Area 134 is taking a bit of a risk. I'm guessing he feels like he has to. Maybe if he would have found a stack here that's worth contesting, like a 4 engine stack or something. This could have resulted in a really beneficial engagement. What have we here? Still, Monza playing really passively with that Aegis. It looks like Comanche almost took the rose just for a team that worked. I mean, I know they didn't. I know they're still going to want to push at least a little bit. But they're not too worried about their late game, so they don't have to be worried about this game at all. And Flens is out. So, the last tier 2 tower is going to get pushed down. The shrine is going to get wrecked for a bit of extra net worth. And at this point, Team Comanche, they're just printing gold with two of those ultra greedy heroes. And I mean, one of the things I addressed during the draft already is really showing here, and that is how unreliable OD can be against Medusa. Although very good against her, and although a very good hero from Ryujin, Ryujin wasn't really able to shine just because of his just because of his early game in the mid lane, going kind of poorly against Naya. Okay, in comes the Ravage, BKB proc from Flens there. However, Medusa ultimate can't be BKB through, so Flens is going to suffer for quite a bit and is going to lose his BK is going to lose his BKB there. Luna, meanwhile, is going to get killed up in exchange and. Medusa just barely being saved there, but Lunaya doesn't have a B doesn't have BKB, doesn't have a, a cheese or anything. Luna is going ham. Lunaya cannot afford to fall. Is getting okay. Is getting healed up now. Luna meanwhile went to town and got an ultra kill. I mean, I was so focused on Medusa dropping because with Medusa surviving here, the game could have been extended for a bit, and suddenly Evil Corp could have come online based off the. Rono and OD combo still. That Luna was just.